The topic of this whole week's um, <clears throat> learning is, is Fermi questions. And you're like, your mama's a Fermi. Oh, okay. So Fermi questions are a, a class of questions where you, um, you make really large estimates of things that you can't actually count. So they're named after this guy called Enrico Fermi. Um, I'm pretty sure he was super bored, had nothing to do. He was Italian. He was also the person who invented the first nuclear reactor. And he was known for his ability to make good approximate calculations with little or no actual data. So some things we can't actually count. We see these all the time. You just don't realize until you've done Fermi questions that that's what you're looking at. One that we see all the time is how much rain fell. Right? So after Harvey or after any hurricane, they'll be like, well, five trillion gallons fell in Harris County. You, you can't measure that. Like, nobody's standing out with five gallons, bu gallon buckets, catching every single raindrop that falls. Like, there's no way to actually, there's no way to actually measure that. But we like to know how much fell for various reasons. Um, but we just have to estimate it instead. So that would be a Fermi question. And what they might do is we know how many inches fell because we have rain gauges and stuff like that. We know how big Harris County is. So this is Harris County. So they know like the land area. So they would take the land area probably in square feet or square miles and then they would say, okay, well, let's assume 33 inches fell over this entire area. Then from that, they would calculate the volume of rain. That's a Fermi question. Another Fermi question this is kind of like the classic Fermi question, is how many tennis balls would it take to fill the classroom? Well, um, we can't actually fill the classroom with tennis balls for, the, for several reasons. Number one, it would cost us millions and millions of dollars to buy all the tennis balls, and then also, how would we even get them in here? But, but it's kind of fun to calculate, and it kind of, you know, this is a Fermi question. So we would have to, we would have to, take the tennis balls, find out their volume. Sorry about that. And then we'd have to find out the volume of the classroom and we'd have to like figure it out. So there are kind of some steps that we would take when we're solving these. So I'm gonna write these steps out. So the first step is you're gonna find the larger volume or area. The second one is you're gonna find the smaller vo volume or area. Then you're gonna take the large one, divide that by the small one, and then after that, you'll answer any other questions. So for the tennis ball question, let's, let's change it up a little bit. Okay, so let's make our question, how much would it cost to fill the classroom with tennis balls? So now we're not necessarily looking for just the number of tennis balls. We want to know how much it would cost. So, okay, so our first step would be to find the larger one. So volume of the classroom. So we already know the measurements. We've been looking at it before. This is 41 feet by 32 feet by 9 feet. Okay, so that was like 11,808 feet squared. Next thing we'd do is we would find the volume of the tennis ball. Um, I don't know what the volume of a tennis ball is, but we would, we would calculate that. The next thing we would do is we would divide the two. So we would go the volume of the classroom by the volume of the tennis balls. This is going to give me number of tennis balls. And then, so that takes us to step three. Well, step four says answer any other questions. Well, so we have the number of tennis balls. Now the actual question is how much would it cost to fill the classroom with tennis balls? So we would need, we would need to know, um, we'd need to know the price per tennis ball. So we would take the number of tennis balls and that hashtag is actually the number sign. So number of tennis balls and we would multiply that times the price per tennis ball. And that would give us our total cost. So cost equals number of tennis balls by total cost. So notice that there, there are several things wrong with this. Number one, our volume of our tennis ball is going to be in inches because they're small. So we're going to have to convert. So let me make a note. You're going to need to make these the same, the, the same unit. The other thing that you're going to have to do is you're going to have to list out all your assumptions because we're assuming a lot with this problem. 
first we're going to assume that we can actually fill the classroom with tennis balls without them rolling out because normally like if you have a, a door open the more you try to pack the tennis balls in the more they're going to just roll out so you'd have to like fill it from the top or something like that so our assumption is we can actually fill the classroom with tennis balls the next one is we're going to assume the classroom is empty like there are no desks in there the little pesky tables that are in the back um, we're going to assume those are gone so we're assuming the classroom is empty we're going to have to assume that the classroom um, is the size that we say it is so we're going to assume that the classroom is 41 feet by 30 feet 32 feet by 9 feet because really um, we kind of measured that last year by walking the floor and counting the tiles because the tiles are one foot, one foot each. So I've never actually measured it with the measuring tape. So we're going to assume that it's that. We're also assuming that there aren't any of the cutouts where all the columns are. We're going to assume that the tennis balls are not compressible. You know, that they're springy and they bounce. So if you have the weight of all these other tennis balls on there, um, we're going to assume that it's not going to cause them to squish down. So tennis ball is not compressible. We're going to assume that there's not some kind of a deflate gate thing going on, like with Tom Brady, where the um, if you chill the balls down, the room the the air kind of shrinks in and the balls get really really squishy and kind of like that they deflate. So we're going to assume that it's a standard room temperature, so that the balls aren't going to like squish down for being, you know, for the temperature being too low. So we're going to assume that. Um, we're going to assume standard tennis ball size. And uh, we can Google that. This is just a how-to video, so I'm not going to go to that hassle. So it's standard, like regulation tennis ball size. And we would list out what that is. So these are some of the assumptions that we would use, and then we would plug those back in <clears throat> over here. And then, and then we just, once we have our assumptions, we just go through the steps. So we have our, we calculate the volume of the classroom, calculate the volume of the tennis ball. We divide the volume of the classroom by the volume of the tennis ball, and that gives us the number of tennis balls. And then after that, um, if that was the question, like if the question was how many tennis balls would fit in the classroom, then we would be done at step three. In this case, our question is actually how much would it cost? So we would take it one step further, and we would take the number of tennis balls, and we would multiply it by the price. So that is a Fermi question.